Hi guys, welcome back to Glam Me Up. Today's video is going to be another monthly beauty tips and tricks. On my blog, I feature these once a week. I do a post every Friday on a different beauty tip and trick. They can be anything from makeup, skincare, hair, nails, anything like that. And they're really great because they show you some tips that I might know and it can help you out. So since I do those once a week on my blog, I like to do a monthly video on my channel. That way I can go over all of them and share them with you guys. So I'm just going to be doing four at a time. Sometimes they might overlap, like I might already have a new one for this week and I'm already doing a video. But the one for this week's not going to be in this video. It'll be in the next video. So I'm going to be doing four of them at a time. For all of these beauty tips, I will list the original blog post that I did on them in the bottom bar. That way you can check out the full post and it has more detailed instructions and it has links to all the products mentioned where you can buy them and everything. So definitely check out each one of those for whichever one you're interested in. Okay, so my first beauty tip of the week was how to fix a mascara mistake. When I do my mascara, somehow I always end up getting little dots of mascara on my upper lid or I smudge it or sometimes underneath I get little dots. And if you wipe it off right away, you can really smudge it and it can mess up your whole entire look because it smudges the mascara, it can smudge your eyeliner and wipe off your eyeshadow, and then you've got to retouch up the eyeshadow again. So it can be really annoying. So I figured out a way to fix it without messing up your whole look. So what I do is after I smudge it or anything or I get mascara on my lid, I let it dry probably for about 5 to 10 seconds or something just so it's not wet still. And then I take a dry Q-tip like this one, and then I just lightly go over it, very lightly. You don't want to push it down because if you pull it, it's going to pull the shadow off. So just very lightly like go over it, and it will take it right off, and it will not smudge your eyeshadow or make a bigger smudge. The key to this is letting it dry first and making sure that your Q-tip is dry. I used to wet the Q-tip before I would take it off, and that would just smear it and make a mark. So you want to make sure that it's definitely dry and it will take it right off. And then if you do have any areas, you can just take your blending brush and go back over it with a little bit of shadow to blend it nicely. Since my makeup is already done, I don't want to demonstrate this again, but I do have before and after pictures for my blog, and I will put these in the video here. So waiting for the mascara to dry and using the Q-tip dry really helps, and it does get it off well without ruining your whole makeup. So my next beauty tip that I did is how to apply foundation like a pro. There's a lot of different ways that you can apply your foundation. You can just use your fingers, which is the cheapest and easiest way to do it because your fingers are warm, they blend nicely, and all your makeup will go on evenly. But the only problem with that is a lot of the product gets soaked up into your hands. And your hands do have germs and bacteria on them, so you don't want to transfer those onto your face. So one of the ways you can do it is using a brush. This is a regular foundation brush. This is a Sigma SS190, and that is the old numbering. Um, these are okay to use, they're pretty standard, but I find that they can be kind of streaky and they're small so you have to really work with it a lot. And sometimes if your foundation dries quickly, it can be hard to blend it out. Another way of doing it is using a stippling brush like this one, and this is the Sigma SS 187. A lot of people use these, but I find that they're hard to use because this one sheds for one. And they're so light and flimsy that it doesn't really blend it in very good. If you worked really quickly and blended it in really fast, it would have a nice coverage, but it is kind of hard to use. Another way of applying your foundation is with a flat top synthetic kabuki brush, and that is similar to this, but it's completely flat and it's shorter and it's more dense. I've heard that Sigma has some really good ones. I think they're called the Sigmax HD brushes. I really want to try those out, but they're really great foundation brushes, I hear. But personally, my favorite way to apply foundation is using the Sonia Kashuk blending sponge. A lot of professional makeup artists actually use the Beauty Blender sponge, which is similar to this, but this one is just cheaper and it's more accessible because you can get this at Target. The Beauty Blender one is pink. It is shaped differently and it has more of an egg shape, but this one is purple. The one that I have is purple because I did get it a while ago, but if you get the new Sonia Kashuk one, it's actually blue, and I think it might be shaped a little bit differently. But this is the old one. This one works great. This is so much better than using a brush or your fingers because it just blends it in nicely. It's so quick because you can just stamp it on all over your face, and it's already blended. It's really effortless. I think these are only like $10 at Target, so they're easy to get if you have a Target around you, or you can order them online, and they are cheap. They're a lot cheaper than the Beauty Blender sponge, and you can just clean them with regular baby shampoo. So how I use this is I wet it first. This is just the spray bottle that I use, and I spray it down, and I squeeze it out on a towel just to get the excess water out. You can also use it dry, but it really helps to use it wet. That way it doesn't absorb a lot of your foundation, because when I was using it dry, a lot of my foundation got soaked up in here, and I was wasting product, and it was hard to get clean. That's why mine has a hole in it, because I'd be squeezing it to try to get all the product out when I was cleaning it, and it just made it break off. So be careful when you're washing these. But these are really nice, and they just make your foundation go on so smoothly. It's really fast to use and easy, so I really recommend using this to apply your foundation. It'll make your foundation go on so much better. Also, I will link my foundation routine right here and below. That way you can check it out and see how I use this in a full tutorial. 
So my next beauty tip of the week is my secrets to whiter teeth. There's so many things that you can do to whiten your teeth, but I'm just going to be showing you guys some ways that you can keep your teeth from getting stained and some ways that you can whiten them. So first of all, stay away from any dark drinks. That includes coffee and tea the most and dark sodas. You can still drink things like Sierra Mist or Sprite because they're lighter colored. They're not going to stain your teeth as bad. They are still bad for you because of the sugar and the sodium, but they're not going to stain your teeth. Coffee and tea are the worst though. They really stain badly and I know a lot of people can be addicted to coffee and tea and stuff and you want to drink it more, but it is really bad for your teeth and it does stain it. Personally, I love to drink coffee. I drink it every day, but what I like to do is drink it out of a straw. That really helps so it doesn't get on your teeth because if you're sipping regular coffee or tea from a cup, this goes for soda too. When you're drinking it from a cup, it's just going to be swishing all in your mouth and it can get on your teeth and everything. When you drink it from a straw though, the straw goes behind your teeth and then you swallow it right away so it's not getting mixed around in your mouth. It is still going to get on your teeth some, but it's not going to be as direct on your teeth as soon as you're drinking it. So that really helps a lot too. Every time I drink coffee, I always have a straw in it no matter what. And you can get huge packs of them for really cheap. It's also really good to brush your teeth after every meal. You don't have to do this crazily like every single time you eat, but just after like lunch and dinner and especially before you go to bed at night, always brush your teeth. That way you're getting all the surface stains off from food and any dark drinks that you had and that way they don't even have a chance to stain your teeth. It's also good to use a whitening toothpaste. I really like the Crest Advanced Vivid 3D one. That one's really good too. It does keep your teeth whiter and it just helps to remove the surface stain. It's also really important to floss your teeth. I know it's hard to get in the habit of doing this, but it really does help. If you let food and plaque get caked up between your teeth, it is going to be yellow and then you're going to end up with white teeth but then have a yellow in between the cracks. So it is really good to keep your teeth flossed just to get rid of the plaque. That way none of it builds up and stains your teeth. Another way to keep your teeth white is using a whitening mouthwash rinse after every time you brush your teeth. Crest has a good one. The same line from the Advanced 3D one is really good. All of those are just ways to prevent stains. But if you really want to whiten your teeth, I recommend getting whitening strips. I really like the Crest ones. They have tons of different whitening strips made for your needs or how much whitening that you need. And I talk about all of them like a short review and how much they are and compare them and everything on my blog that goes with this. So definitely check that out if you want to compare all of the different white strips. That way you can figure out which ones will work best for you but they are really good. I use this about once a year and that's all that I need to whiten and it just really helps maintain my white teeth. The first time that I did whiten my teeth, I used the original Crest white strips and they worked completely fine. You put them on for 30 minutes, you use them once a day for about 10 days and it completely whitened my teeth. Before I started using those, my teeth were really yellow so they did really work because my teeth were completely white afterwards and I only had to do it about once a year after that. The white strips that I recommend the most is probably the Advanced Vivid ones just because they have the most whitening power and they're not too harsh on your teeth. And they're kind of just basic, like if you have yellow teeth and you want to whiten them, I think it takes about 10 days or something. They also have other ones though, like for sensitive teeth, they have like a 2 hour express one where you just wear it one time for 2 hours and then it does all the whitening at once. They also have like some touch up ones, like if you just have a little bit of stains and you want to touch it up. So there's so many different ones. I go over all of them on my blog, so I will definitely link that so you guys can check that out more in depth. My next beauty tip that I did is how to get healthier, stronger nails. I used to be completely addicted to acrylic nails. I wore them for years. My nails were so damaged after years of wearing them. It's taken about two years to finally get them back to normal. So I've definitely got a routine down on how to keep my nails healthy. The first thing you want to do is completely avoid any form of fake nails. They're okay for special occasions like you have a prom or a wedding or something to go to. They're okay for that, but definitely don't stay on them constantly. Don't keep getting them done because it really damages your nails. You can get funguses and bacteria under them. They rip off the top layer of your nails and they sand them down really far before they put them on. And the chemicals aren't good for them either. I used to get ridges and dents in my nails and it took forever to grow out. I even got some yellow spots from funguses. It's really not good for your nails at all. It doesn't matter how good the nail place is, they always end up getting damaged. And it will take a really long time to recover them. So completely avoid any type of fake nails. Even just the press-on ones or the glue-on ones, those still take off the top layer of your nail when you take them off. Even just soaking them off is not good for them because the acetone is very drying. So some other ways that you can avoid damaging your nails is be easy when you file your nails. You don't want to just saw your nails back and forth. You want to do it very gently. It's, they say it's best to only go one direction, but I find that's kind of hard sometimes. So if you just do it really lightly, don't just saw them and make sure that you don't split them or anything because it can really make your nails brittle if you file them too much. Also, make sure that you get a file that's made for natural nails. This is just a medium fine file. The medium side is here. This is for fake nails, but this side right here is fine. It's very smooth. It doesn't hurt your finger when you go over it. That's because it's made for natural nails, so it's not going to damage them. I do talk a lot about these buffer blocks, and they aren't bad for your nails, but if you do it too much, it is going to 
to be bad. You only want to do this about once a week, if that. I probably only go through the whole steps about every two weeks. Um, about once a week, though, I just touch it up with the shine side. But you don't want to be using these too much because it can take off the top layer of your nail if you use it too much. Also, when you remove your nail polish, you want to make sure that you have a nail polish remover that has no acetone in it like this one. It has to say non-acetone on it. I know it is hard, though, not to buy the ones that do have acetone in them because the ones that contain acetone help your nail polish come off faster. Like if you have glitter nail polish or nail polish that's hard to remove, it is going to break it down and make it come off faster. But it is really drying for your nails and your cuticles, so you want to make sure that you get a nail polish remover that says non-acetone on it. Also, you want to make sure that you keep your nails and your cuticles really moisturized. I like to use the Burt's Bees Almond Milk Beeswax Hand Cream on my hands just to keep them really moisturized because if they get dry, the skin's going to start to peel off on them and stuff. I've shown this in favorites before. It does work really well and it's very moisturizing for your hands. And to keep your cuticles moisturized, I really like the Burt's Bees Lemon Butter Cuticle Cream. I've talked about this a lot on my blog. It's excellent. It smells really good and it works really well to moisturize your cuticles. Your nails and your cuticles are going to look a lot healthier if you keep them moisturized. It's also good to keep your nails groomed a lot. You want to keep your cuticles pushed back. If you let your cuticles grow up too much, your nail's not going to look as long and they're going to keep it from going as well. So I recommend pushing them back about once a week. You could use a tool like this where it's just like rounded and it's kind of um, bent a little bit and you just push it down like that. Or you can use a stick like this that just has a little bit of grit on each end. That way when you push it back, you can kind of scrape off the excess skin at the bottom. You can kind of just scrape off the skin on the bottom of the nail. That way your polish will go on a lot smoother. So these are really good too. But just a regular cuticle pusher like this will work fine. Or you can just use your other nails and just push them down. But you don't want them to grow up too much because then it looks bad and your nails aren't going to grow as fast. Only push back your cuticles though. Never cut them off. I use cuticle scissors like this and I just trim them if they get long. If your cuticles are really long though, when you push them back you might need to trim them a little bit. Just get some sharp cuticle scissors like this, but do not cut them off completely off because you do need your cuticles to protect your nail. And they will start to bleed and then you can get germs and stuff in them. So never cut them completely off, but if they are really long you can trim them with scissors like this. But try to keep them pushed back and don't cut them all the way off. It's also good to use a strengthening nail polish. I really like the Sally Hansen Complete Care 4-in-1 treatment. This is a 4-in-1 treatment because it moisturizes your nails, it helps them grow, it makes them stronger, it keeps them from breaking, all that kind of stuff. So you could just use this on its own just as a clear polish or you can also use this as a base coat before you paint your nails and it works really well. It really helps bring back my nails after the years of acrylic. It helped them get them stronger and make them grow and all that kind of stuff. Another thing that is really bad for your nails is of course biting them. A lot of people have this bad habit. I don't have the habit so I can't give you too many tips on how to stop biting, but I've heard some things like using a spray on them or a certain type of nail polish. But I think the best thing to do is figure out why you're biting them. If you're biting them because you're nervous or you're bored, find something else to entertain yourself or chew gum or something to keep yourself occupied. It looks terrible when your nails are really short and stubby and it's not healthy at all to be putting your mouth underneath of your nails. I'm pretty sure I put a link on the blog post that goes with this of where you can find out more information about how to stop biting your nails. And the last way to keep your nails healthy is to eat healthy. You want to make sure you get all of your vitamins to help your nails stay strong and grow. But if you're like me and you're impatient and you don't always eat as good as you should, I would recommend taking a hair, skin, and nails vitamin. This is the Nature's Bounty one. I have noticed a difference already with these. My nails are growing super fast. I plan on doing a full review on these as soon as I test them out more. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated with these, but I recommend taking a hair, skin, and nails vitamin if you have really weak, brittle nails. So I know I just went through a lot of different tips and tricks, but I hope some of them helped you all out. Make sure you check out all the blog posts that went with these beauty tip of the weeks so that we can get a more in-depth review on the products mentioned, and I'll also show links and stuff to where you can get them. So also check out my April beauty tips and tricks of the month, that way you can see all of last month's beauty tips and tricks. And also leave me a comment or a video response with your beauty tips and tricks, that way I can feature them in the next video. Also, every week when I do the beauty tip of the week, if you comment on those posts and you tell me your beauty tip of the week, I will feature that and your username and link and everything on the next post. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you all soon. Bye everybody.